Hey, greetings YouTube. Performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today I have a Hoover uh, to unbox here. And this is a bagless Hoover. It says high performance swivel on it. Uh, let's take a look at the model number, which is a UH75100. And if you're unfamiliar with model numbers on vacuums, that's the important information you need to know is that number, not uh, whatever marketing materials put on the box. Now, full disclosure, um, Hoover occasionally sends me products to unbox, uh, but no money is ever exchanged. Just know that. The box looks pretty good, has a picture of the product, has some of the features, all that stuff on it. So, happy to see that. Let's go ahead and unbox it and see where we go from there. Let's see what's in the box. They use good quality tape. So the first thing I'm greeted with is a very small, skinny instruction manual on how to assemble it, so you can't miss that. That's probably a good thing. Handle. And the machine just slides out like that. I actually really like how they package this. This makes it easy. Um, this makes it really easy for the consumer. And using this cardboard means it's eco-friendly packaging as well, though bagless vacuums tend not to be as eco-friendly as bag vacuums. All right, so we got the handle here. Let's take it out of the bag. All right, already mostly put together. Um, it looks like there's a button lock holding this handle together which means to assemble this, I don't need any tools. Yep. Oh, I like that. No screwdriver, none of that nonsense. That's really nice. Well, so we got some accessories here. A really thin, narrow crevice tool. We have a very small telescoping wand. You can, of course, put that on the end there. And to give you an idea, the telescoping wand fully extended is about the length of my arm. So a little short on that. Let's see, we have, it's a really nice soft brush for being a polymer brush, it's really soft. I'm not scared of that scratching anything. And then we have um, some lint pickers and a very small upholstery tool. Big brush, small upholstery tool. So those are the included accessories we got. And then of course, this is the same hose Hoover's been using forever, is this. And then this hose here, when you put your wand on it, it becomes an inch and a quarter adapter. So you can put pretty much any standard accessories you want after you have the wand attached. Let's wind the cord. It's got 30 feet of cord. All right, so I got everything all together. Let's go over the features and where everything's at uh, together. So up here, there is a release for the dirt cup. And then right here in bright yellow, man, you can't miss that filter. Uh, this is interesting, the filter has a spring in it. And I suspect the reason for this is to allow you to rinse it out real good. Because you would have to, and it's very clearly labeled, I like that, really like that. Uh, pretty much every time you vacuum, expect to rinse this filter out, being a bagless unit. Of course, there'll be a lot more maintenance than the other bagged vacuums Hoover makes. Um, real easy to get to the cyclone assembly. Again, you'll need to wash this out occasionally as well. Probably every uh, th few months you'll need to wash that out. So you can just empty everything real easy, wash it out, and disassemble everything. I really like that. Because um, one of the big problems with some of the other bagless vacuums is they are hard to maintain, uh, especially the Sharks and Dysons don't come apart this easy. So I really like that. Now your power switch is right here. And then as far as leaning the machine back, you just kind of give it a push. The other thing I want to mention in terms of maintenance items, and the reason we're doing this in kind of a funky order, probably compared to the other people who have done this, is this is your HEPA filter. So expect to change this on a regular basis as well. Um, my experience with a filter like this is they last about three months or so before they need to be changed. Sometimes six if you don't do a lot of vacuuming but expect to change this filter. Don't wash this, even if the instructions say to wash it, don't wash this, just change it. Um, 
it's fine enough that it'll actually remove the minerals from the water. So washing these usually makes it worse. Now I see a hard floor setting, but I don't see a way of stopping the brush. So this is more of a height adjustment than an actual true hard floor setting where you can stop the brush roller. So keep that in mind. Now, it doesn't lay completely flat looking at that. Hey, that's a nice throwback to the brand. You notice the Hoover logo matches my Hoover from the 70s. I really like that throwback. It's a nice touch to see that on a vacuum cleaner again. And for those of you who don't know, Hoover is owned by a company called TTI who makes power tools. They also own Auric and a few other vacuum companies. And they bought Hoover from the Maytag company a while ago and saved the Hoover name. So if it wasn't for TTI, we would not have Hoover as we think of them today. And they made a lot of improvements uh, when they first bought them. So again, uh, a lot of people like to say these aren't as good as the old Hoovers. Well, they're, you know, removed from that name several times and technology has changed. So, you know, to make, you know, that comparison between the old Hoover and the new Hoover, it's really not a comparison. It's fair just to compare it to other vacuums in its class. Stay tuned for my review where I'll actually take it apart and really put it through its paces. But I just want to look at the roller and how it's made. So you have multiple screws to get to the belt right here. This looks like seven. There's a piece of felt here. This is supposed to aid for hard floor cleaning because this brush does not stop. Again, I wouldn't personally use this on hard floor without stopping the brush. They have other models uh, in a similar price point that will do that if you need that feature. You know, the wheels have uh, a weird kind of feel to them. They're hard plastic, but it's like, yeah, they got like a texture to them. And then the back wheels have a nice rubber coating on them. One of the big features of this machine is it has an articulation to it or a swivel neck. Some people will also call this the ball feature, uh, though that's kind of a misnomer since this is something that's been around for a while. And actually Hoover owns one of the first companies to put this feature in a machine, which was Orc. So looking at this, yeah, it actually kind of maneuvers nicely. Um, that swivel neck, it doesn't have full articulation like uh, a Mila or something, but you know, for pr the price point of this, it's definitely better than the Bissell one that I had on the channel a while ago. And you know, these swivel necks, they s it, it seems like a silly feature, but it actually saves you about 30% of your time when you're vacuuming. So it ends up being a big feature and it relieves a lot of uh, the stress in the wrist as well. So if you're new to the channel, we test vacuums and working vacuum, which is a nice combination between practical airflow and sealed vacuum. We'll also test the sealed vacuum when we do this. Let's see what the Hoover gets. So that's about 60 sealed, which is a pretty low number. Uh, it's not the lowest. It's definitely higher than something like a Kirby or some of the older designs. And it gets about 30 inches of working, which is actually a really good number. So we'll see if, as the cyclone fills up, if those numbers stay consistent. But to give you an idea, that's pretty good for a bagless machine. Uh, something like a Dyson will be around 19 or 20 on this scale. All right, we're going to do the performance reviews pickup test and sound test. We're using a studio mic, so you're going to hear the real sound of the machine. We have breakfast cereal, flour, cat litter, and fresh pet hair. Let's see how the Hoover does. <laughs> First off, you can see that there's a little bit of hair left, and that lines up where the belt goes in the roller. So as you vacuum normally, that's not so big a deal. Let's see if it left any hair in this area. Left a little bit of hair right there. Oh, my. Uh, it left a lot of cat litter in the carpet. Uh, no flour. And it snow plowed one piece of breakfast cereal. So actually for a budget machine, that's pretty good. Uh, it definitely could be better. And again, Hoover does make a wide variety of vacuums. So if you're not satisfied with this, I would highly check out, recommend you check out my other videos, uh, like on the Hoover Tempo, which again, passes this test with flying colors. I just wanted to point out the hard floor switch that you want to look at that actually turns the brush roller off. You don't want that brush roller spinning on hard floor. Check out my review on the Hoover wind tunnel 
Max and the Hoover Tempo where I show a vacuum with that feature. So if you're doing a lot of hard floor cleaning, definitely check out those reviews as well. Well, I wanna thank you all for watching. I hope this video has helped you uh, determine whether or not this is right for you or at least what's in the box. Uh, full review will be up later. So definitely go check that out. Give this video a thumbs up. Definitely hit subscribe if you wanna see more performance reviews. Meanwhile, uh, check out some of these other videos on the other Hoovers that I have reviewed and unboxed.